Hello and welcome to What's in the Night Sky for May 2022. There are lots of exciting things in store for us this month. I'm going to talk to you about a planetary conjunction, a meteor shower, a lunar eclipse and our constellation of the month which is Aquarius the Cupbearer. Let's begin by talking about the planets. So you can see that I am looking towards the southeast on the 1st of May at around half past three in the morning. So you either need to be somebody that goes to bed quite late or someone that rises quite early for this one. And if I just move time onwards, you'll see that Saturn is beginning to rise just towards four o'clock. If we continue, you'll see we've got Mars rising as well. And you can see that the sky is beginning to brighten now. So dawn is approaching. So it's important to have a nice clear horizon. You don't want to be looking at tall trees or buildings over here because you're not going to have very long to observe this before the sun is up. And you'll see that Jupiter and Venus are rising together um, just after half past four. And Jupiter and Venus are in conjunction which means they appear really really close together in the sky so you've got this lovely parade of planets saturn mars jupiter and venus and you get the extra bonus of jupiter and venus appearing so close together um, and if we put a binocular view on you can see that they really easily fit within the same field of view of a pair of binoculars and should be quite a spectacular sight early in the morning on the first of may if we continue to go through the month, you can see that Jupiter and Venus begin to separate and are getting higher, but also the mornings are getting lighter. So as the month goes on, if you want to uh, observe these morning planets, then you're going to want to go out earlier and earlier in order to catch them before the sun comes up and the sky gets too bright and you can't see them because they're just washed out by the dawn. Staying with this region of sky, let's have a look at our meteor shower for May, which is the Eta Aquarids. Um, the Eta Aquarids originates in the constellation of Aquarius. So um, the radiant of the meteor shower, where they appear to come from, is in Aquarius. We can put that on for you to see. You can see Aquarius meteors any time from April the 19th all the way until May the 28th, but the peak of the meteor shower occurs on the night of the 6th, morning of the 7th. So if you go out after midnight is best, um, the moon sets nice and early, so that won't be in your way. Um, make sure you do it while the sky is still nice and dark, so don't let it get too close to dawn. The important thing is to be in a nice dark location, or as dark as you can. If you can't find a dark location, there's no reason to not go out and still have a look and see if you can spot any. Make sure you're nice and warm, get yourself a nice blanket or a sun lounge or something to lie on, and you can look anywhere in the sky, so you don't have to look towards the radiant. You can look uh, and see these meteors appearing anywhere but they will appear to originate somewhere around here. The meteors themselves are caused by the Earth passing through the debris trail that was left behind by Halley's Comet. Um, and uh, that debris field causes two meteor showers every year. So this one and also the Orionids in October. Um, and you can tell by the name that that one appears to have its radiant in the constellation of Orion. It's considered to be an average shower, so in terms of its hourly rate, so um, hourly rates are, can be difficult to predict, but you might see up to 30 meteors per hour. Um, and you can also look out for really bright meteors, fireballs, there's, you, there's all sorts that you might um, see if you get out and observe for a few hours. Um, you can also have a go at photographing them if you want to. Um, you can do some long exposure photographs and see if you can catch any meteor trails. You might pick up some satellites and things as well if you do that. The full moon for May occurs on the 16th and it is known sometimes as the flower moon, um, known by early Native American tribes as the flower moon because it's the time of year when spring flowers appear. Um, it's also known sometimes as the corn planting moon or the milk moon as well. If we go to the morning of the 16th, 
and take a look at the full moon you can see it's in the constellation of Libra and this month we get treated to a total lunar eclipse as well in the UK we're not in the best position to observe this eclipse but we're in a reasonably good position we will be able to see the moon when it's at totality and the best time to to get outside and start observing um, will be uh, sometime before half past two in the morning because um, half past two is the time when the moon will start to enter the Earth's shadow. Um, so if you want to catch as much of this eclipse as possible, then um, get outside and get set up just before half past two. So if we zoom in and take a look. So I'm just going to take us to half, around half past two and I'm going to start time moving on a little bit faster than normal so you can see what time it is down here so if you start to observe the eclipse you won't notice very much happening at first and as the eclipse goes on you'll notice the lunar surface begin to darken if you want to observe with your naked eye that's fine if you want to observe with a telescope or pair of binoculars or if you want to take some photographs those are all good ways to observe the eclipse as well The point of maximum eclipse when um, we say that the eclipse is in totality occurs around half past four or just before half past four. Um, so in London, that will be between 4.29 and 5.06 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, if you're elsewhere in the country, the time will be slightly different. So you can see now we're around uh, 4 a.m. and you can really see the, the lunar surface starting to darken. And we're looking for around half past four for that period of totality. And I'm going to pause it when we get there. So we can see that the moon is completely eclipsed and we can also see that it's about to set. Um, so my um, view in Stellarium here is not very good because I've got some trees and things getting in the way. So you need to find yourself a nice flat horizon. Um, this is why the UK is not the best part of the world to observe this eclipse. But if you can find um, somewhere where you haven't got things obscuring your horizon, then you should be able to observe the eclipse from the beginning, see the moon begin to darken, become darker, reach the point of total eclipse and turn red. And then after that, you will lose it below the horizon. Let's go back to Aquarius now, since it is our constellation of the month. So I'm just going to take us back to a part of the night that is a little bit darker. We'll go back over here. Um, so we've hopefully already been observing in this region of sky this month because we've got the little planetary dance at the beginning of the month. We've got the Eta Aquarius meteor shower. And here we've got the uh, constellation of Aquarius. I chose the constellation of Aquarius as our constellation of the month because it is associated with the meteor shower and I thought you might like to hear the story behind it. Um, it's not a particularly bright constellation. It isn't that easy to spot, um, but that means you can see it as a bit of a challenge, see how much of it you can make out, especially if you've gone to somewhere that's got quite a dark sky in order to observe the meteor shower. Um, if we put the art on, then um, you can see that the constellation is depicted as a cup bearer. Um, so Aquarius is known as the cup bearer or the water bearer. The Greeks linked uh, the constellation to um, Ganymede, a uh, cup bearer to the gods who was granted eternal youth. There's a little asterism to look out for in Aquarius. So remembering that an asterism is a collection of stars within a constellation that forms a distinctive pattern. So if we take the um, main constellation lines off, just to make it a bit easier. There we go. And if I put the asterism lines on and the asterism labels on, and I'll take the art off as well. Um, so it's the Y in Aquarius, and that is known as the water jar or the urn. And um, a point of interest for that is that it's um, quite close to where the radiant of the meteor shower appears. Um, you don't need to be able to um, pick this out to observe the meteor shower. As we've talked about already, 
you don't need to be that accurate. You can look anywhere to see if you can spot some meteors. But if you are in a dark sky and um, you're looking for the constellation of Aquarius, then have a look at where you think the water jar might be. Let's finish by talking about the International Space Station. There are lots of opportunities to see the International Space Station go over this month. The one that I'm going to point out to you is on the 7th because you might be outside anyway on the morning of the 7th looking for meteors. So I'm just going to take us to the 7th and I'm going to take those asterisms away and put our more familiar constellation lines back on. So um, when you are looking for the International Space Station, you're looking for it to rise in the west. You'll see it go over the sky, um, taking around five or six minutes. So this pass on the 7th starts at around 3.49 in the morning. And I'm just going to speed up time a little bit so you have an opportunity to see that go over. And there it goes. It'll be nice and bright. So if you've got a clear sky, um, that's a really good opportunity to see the International Space Station. That brings me to the end of our tour of the night sky for May and I'll be back again to talk about what we can see in June.